It's the next day I gave the glue overnight to dry. What I got set up here now is a rig for checking to see if there's any wobble in the wheel as I have it set up here. It's not bad. I don't have to fix it before I attach these bearing blocks and that I got on a special a couple of years ago, actually. Um, these are ones that I normally wouldn't buy. I prefer to buy the raw bearing and mount it in my own block. But these were super cheap, so I bought them. And they've been sitting here ever since, so I'm going to use them for this. I also set up a stick here with a pencil sticking out of the end of it, so it'll make a mark on the wheel. But I'm not going to do anything with this now. Like I say, it's close. There is some wobble there, but I can work with it after. What I need to do now is I need to actually bolt these things on. And I'm going to do that with pieces of 3 8 threaded rod, cut the length. Then I'll drill the holes through the wheels and put the threaded rod in. Before I bolt on the bearings, I need to true up the wheel as much as I can here on the disc sander while I still have the 5 8 inch hole in the middle. What I'm going to do after this is drill that out a bit bigger so that the shaft fits in there and doesn't run. I finished truing out the wheel, put the shaft back in, I put the bearings back on and I've lined them up with the holes. Now to make sure that these are sitting down flat because these actually can rotate. So I just pound it with the rubber mallet like that to make sure it's flat down on the wheel. And now I'm going to mark all the way around it with a very fine pen. I'm also going to mark the orientation on each bearing so that I'll be able to put it back in exactly the same place. Now that I've got both bearings marked, I can take them out again, take the shaft out, and I'm going to ream out the hole to three quarters of an inch so that the shaft will turn freely inside there. Now notice I'm using kind of a guide here to help start the bit. After it gets going, I can take the guide off and finish drilling the hole. You might be saying, why are you using thread rod rather than bolts? Well, bolts are a specific length and not having any plan here I didn't know what size I would need and I didn't want to go buy 20 or 30 different size bolts and have on hand it's always better to have threaded rod exactly for that purpose cut it to length and you put nuts on there and it works the same as bolts so I'm putting the bearings back on with the shaft in place, pushing the thread rods through the wheel. Now the threaded rods are tight inside the hole in the wheel, but the bearing block itself can move around a little bit and you'll need that for adjustment. Now I want to get this wheel set up so there's very little wobble and then I'll balance it. I'm going to concentrate on the bearing that's on this side of the wheel. And I've got it lined up with my original marks here. And just to hold it in that place and make sure that it doesn't move, I'm going to put some hot melt glue around it. And that should keep it from moving while I adjust the other side. Once again, I've got my thing set up here so that I can check the wobble. I've also got my stick with the pencil on it to mark where it needs to be adjusted. Now all I need to do is adjust the bearing on the other side. I've got these studs put in here. They're tight, but they're not too tight. So I can move this just by tapping on it. And what that'll do is it'll offset and it should, with the right number of adjustments, make this run without any wobble.
Well, I got it looking pretty good. It's still not perfect. There's still just a very small wobble there. But balance is more important than wobble. If your wheel is well balanced, then it can wobble a little bit and it really won't matter. I'm going to tighten the nuts and then I'm going to check it again just to make sure that nothing moved or it didn't get worse. Who knows, maybe it'll get better. Anything's possible. But these have to be tight. You don't want these coming off. To balance the wheel, I'm going to do it the same way that I did the impellers that I made recently. That's I've got these two steel bars clamped down to my bandsaw table. And I just take this and set it in place. And that'll tell me where the heavy side is and I'll drill a shallow hole to balance the wheel. Now, I, I had to drill another hole, but it looks like it's good now. Um, once again, I'm not looking for perfection as long as it's close enough. I got a blade speed on this bandsaw calculated to about 2,500 feet per minute. So that's not really a high rotational speed for this wheel. So I'm going to be happy with that balance right there, I think. I don't think that my bandsaw here is actually better balanced than this. One way to keep these bearing blocks in place so that they don't move side to side is to make plywood rings that go around that fit tight to them. I'm going to go with construction adhesive, put right into the corners here like this, and that will that should do the same thing. This stuff sets up really hard. And um, when I'm done with the machine, like when I'm finished using it, I can always chip this right off. It should come right off fairly easily. Let's put that in and then smooth it out with my thumb. It's a couple of days later. I've got the other wheel done and I didn't want to show the details on that because it's exactly the same as the first one except it doesn't have the pulley or the spacer and it's a couple of days later also because i wanted for this construction adhesive to thoroughly dry before i moved on and it takes quite a while especially when you hump it up inside there like that now what i want to do here now is uh, slightly crown these wheels there's a couple of different ways to do that, but the way that I'm going to do it right now is to do it with my belt sander. <laughs> and uh, I'm not looking for a very big crown. I just want to ease the corners a little bit, you know. So start up the belt sander, take the wheel, and it will rotate on the belt sander. And I'll angle it like this, and that will actually slow it down and make it, you know, cut evenly all the way around. Just a note on doing it this way before I go, it's not as dangerous as it looks, but I've figured out the best way to do it. And that's to hold the wheel after it gets rotating, that is, at almost a 45 degree angle to the belt and keep it from spinning too fast. If it spins too fast, it has a tendency to jump. So just feed it in, use your fingers as a brake. The only problem is your fingers get a little warmed up sometimes, but not really that big a deal.